Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio. I did not do a video last week on Tuesday because I was busy doing other things so that I could do a video today. Um, my desk is a wreck. Let me clean all of this up and then I'll be back with what I was working on and will continue to work on for a couple months. All right, one light on, four lights, one light off, four new lights on, and we still have shadows. I cannot do anything about it. It has rained almost every blessed day the month of May. And I, when I went to turn on the ceiling fan lights, I looked out the window and son of a gun, it's raining again. I did not realize, was, realize that we were living in the tropical rainforest here in Texas, but evidently we are. Come July and August, I'll be going, oh, I miss the rain. Maybe not. Anyway, so I have been, I, I showed a picture of this on Instagram for those of you who follow me on Instagram. Um, this is, I did a hidden binding. I didn't want to show the strings on the book. This is a, what kind of box is this? A Bisquick box? I don't know. Some kind of food box is the part. And I did the three, three piece uh, binding on it so it's three pieces all right and this is duct tape a little too green but it's all I had so in order to tone it down I did make a, a piece here and I tried to cover up as much of this on the front as I could the back is just plain all right so um, I discovered this YouTube person called Corey I think her last name is Dahmen Dahmen D-A-H-M-E-N and I've never heard of her before, honestly, I swear. And then all of a sudden, uh, she appeared in my uh, suggested video section for YouTube. And I thought, well, let me just see what she's doing. Because she had a lot of coffee dyed stuff in there. I'm like, oh, I like coffee dyed and I have tons of it. So let me see what I can do with it. This is what I found. She does a series of videos called... Uh, she uses up all her scraps. That's the main focus of her videos, <clears throat> excuse me, is to use up her scraps. So I watched a couple episodes and I really did enjoy it. She does a series of videos like one for flips, flaps, and flops. I, I can't remember. Anyway, then she does another one about using up scraps and Every day she posts a video and there's a new project. And she has a little list. She's very organized. And I've been following. So I've been picking out things that I enjoy making and that I think that I would use in journals in the future that I would make. So here, uh, this has five signatures in it and each one has five sheets of coffee dyed paper in half. All right. So I have finished the first signature and that's what I'm going to do the flip through on today is just the first signature and as I go I will come back and do the second third fourth and the fifth and then hopefully the book will be finished although it's already getting alligator mouth and I've only finished one signature so we'll see if we can do this I don't know I might have to um, snip out one of these signatures now that I'm so smart and covered up the spine that's going to be a problem all right so here we go I did not put anything on the inside yet because I can't make up my mind what I want so, um, I've been learning how to make these paper clip tags, bookmarks, I don't know, whatever you call them. And this has a pocket in it. I guess I need one of those cards. Let me use, I got a vendor card in my Etsy order the other day. It's kind of big, but it goes inside there. That's big enough to put a business card in there. Isn't that cool? And it's just coffee dyed um, or tea dyed book text. I did so I did so the top and the bottom of this and I've broken four sewing needles so far because I keep forgetting that the paper clips in there. And plus, you know, I'm not really a sewer. So, this is a challenge for me to sew stuff. And then this is just coffee dyed uh parchment paper. Then I don't know, some kind of doodle I did, and I just glued it on there because it was just way too much brown. And then my friend Peg sent me some um, ribbon and lace and stuff, which I am not usually into. So I coffee dyed my bed sheet. I showed you guys that in another video. And then this is a little bit of the 
excuse me, a ribbon that she sent and I cut out, cut it off for a part for this. Okay, so let's go put back, put this back on here or I'm going to lose it. I'm just so scatterbrained lately. Uh, well, also, evidently challenged on putting stuff back. All right, and then the first thing I learned how to make was the scrap cards. She took thin pieces of scraps and just glued them on, you know, I think this is a basic beige cardstock. And then I took one of the doodle flowers that I made and then drew and then, you know, glue it, glued it on here. I really like the way it looks. It's very monochromatic. I mean, it's like all browns, but that's okay. I'm okay with the color brown. Um, she calls these scrap journal cards. Then there are stamp cards, and this is just a very thin uh, strip of leftover coffee dyed paper, uh, leftover vellum from another project that's sewn in here to make little pockets where you can stick little tiny, st I think hers had like stamps in it. Oh, she calls these stamp cards. Well, um, that's that right there. Next thing is um, clusters, which I have never, re I know lots of people like clusters. I'm like, eh, whatever. Well, <laughs> I'm not feeling eh, whatever now. I kind of enjoyed them. And she said she sews hers, so I sewed mine. Just simple uh, zigzag, nothing too complicated because I can't do anything else. <laughs> Took um, one of the drawings that I did and just glued it on there. Uh, clusters, I wrote down how she said to put them together. This is a scrap paper pad. It is leftover card from something. I'm not sure what it is, but it was tea dyed. I think it's cardstock. And then she took various strips of paper that I also had that were coffee dyed or tea dyed and rips them and then puts them in here puts a little flap over it, and sews it. I mean, this is just stupid simple. I really enjoy making these because there's they're no-brainers. Uh, the next thing is envelopes, and the reason there's so many in here is because there's so many ways to open them. This is just a plain envelope. I stuck some paper inside it to cover up the fact that it was not an attractive inside, and then put a little strip of that same stuff at the bottom. You could put a closure on it, but I thought, eh, it's only, this is an idea book by the way. Sorry. So these are ideas for me to use later in other journals. If I'm stumped, I come to the idea book and I remember, oh yeah, this is one made out of scrap paper. And then that little piece here, you just slip that in there. Some of you guys know all this stuff already because you're like 10 years ahead of me. This is a vellum envelope where I printed off my flowers and colored them and made a miniature envelope. This is made with a die cut. This is another closure where you just put a little circle here and this just kind of tucks into the circle. Then there's the magnet closures. I had these magnets and I've had them for a long time. I just don't use them, don't think about it too often. Nice. This one has where you can put stuff in it. I just didn't. Um, these are again, more envelopes made out of scraps and I tried sewing. <laughs> This one does not open. This one's just to look, you know, to see how it works. Nothing exciting. I can't remember what this is called, but this was the biggest piece I had done before these guys, and I really enjoyed making this. So it opens. Hers opens differently. I decided she glued this down, and I decided glue wasn't good enough. So I put a brad in it and made sure that these lined up here, and I just scoot it like this, and then you can open it. This has a lot of moving parts to it. This is a tuck spot. That's the reason I put the um, arrow there to remind myself of that. It's a tuck spot. Just made out of the same paper card. Yeah, this is a uh, 12 by 12 card stock paper. So there's that. And then I didn't do this exactly the way she did because I didn't understand what I was doing. And I did some of this by memory and I should have watched the video over again. So this is a flip so you can flip it open and then I wrote some instructions here to myself and then this can be turned this way to use as a pad of paper or whatever and some of, I, other people put pockets here and pockets and stuff there I didn't do all that and then this is the flap that was on the you saw on the front that closes it so you just close it and swing this over and it's done I really liked making this now that I understand 
you know, after you get into the videos a little further, you understand why things are the way they are. This one was fun. This is basically nothing but tuck spots. It's a, pe a square that's folded kind of in the middle and only glued on certain parts because you can... Oh, where's that business card? There we go. You tuck it here. You can tuck it here. You can tuck something small in here because you know you can't go very far. Or you can do a diagonal. Same thing down here, diagonal or a little bit. And then the middle, as you can see from this, is a belly band that you glue over it to cover up where you had folded the stuff together. Let me lift this up so it goes in. And it's like that. It's a six by five square and you have to mark the three inches on each of the sides and then you fold them in. Very clever, very simple, not a lot of rocket science there. Then I've been learning how to make tags and um, this is the bed sheet that I tore that I dyed a bunch of stuff. I mean different colors and so I'm learning how to make tags which is not something I usually do. This is just two-sided cardstock. And then safety pin and uh, eyelets. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed doing this. I like making things. Not necessarily painting, but I like making. This is a matchbook cover, and I did it differently than she did it, but I got the same result. This is just coffee dyed paper in here staple, double-sided cardstock I had a strip of. This is a mini uh, book, and I cannot believe that it has as much paper in it as it does, and it lays flat, has a flat profile. That's because of the way she made it. And yes, I had to sew, and no, they're not straight. <laughs> um, the, you take the paper, you fold it in half, then you find something you want to use for a cover, you wrap it around it, you find your half, and you cut it in half. And then it's sewn, the pages are sewn into there. And then you put the covers on, you sew the covers on onto the paper here. You're not mashing them together and then sewing this way. Half your paper is on this side on the cover and the other half is sewn on this side and it is so cool. I can't get over how easy that was and how flat that makes that book. And it doesn't flip open a lot. Oh, that was great. It's small and I like that too. All right, then uh, these are pockets, just a miscellaneous paper. One of my friends sent me um, stickers, a sticker sheet that had all kinds of cool stickers on it. Um, this one I made the other day. I had this part that says, believe this came from Cindy Utter. Um, I found this and then took a tag and covered it with scraps of uh, scrapbook paper. Just taped it on the back for the um, paper clip. It's not very attractive, but it does work. And then it goes inside the pocket. A little Brad. Um, this came from... Peg Robinson. She did watercolor and sent me tissue paper that had these watercolor stamp butterflies. <gasps> when I put the tissue paper on top of the scrapbook paper, it just melted away. So all you really see is this watercolor stamped butterfly, and she's so pretty. Um, I made a mistake of using this black bee. I should have used something else, but the bee was supposed to be for butterfly. <clears throat> the next thing are side pockets. I did not do as many. This should have one, two... It should have more um, pockets on it, but I glued it flat down in the book. I think Corey did it where she just did around the edges, and then the back part of it still would have a place to tuck in in the very back, but I didn't do that. So here's one, and there's number two. There should be three, I think, three or four. Anyway, is this the, oh, there's more than that. So there's, oh yeah, there's this one. And then this one should have a double. Yep, and then there's a double here. You can go this way and then above it. So this has like three or four tuck spots on it. And then it decorated it. All this was was scrap paper that I had. This is coffee dyed paper. And again, um, this is one of... Is this one of the flowers I made? No, this is a stamped image again that Peg sent to me. So I took it and it was tissue paper. Just kind of melts into it. I like it. And then I took a piece of... Um, 
washi tape and put it over it because that's an idea I saw from Corey. So again, this is one of those where I should have not glued it flat on the, so it would have had one, two, three, four tuck spots. Another book bookmark or tag. And yes, I did sew, and yes, I broke a needle on it. <laughs> this one's very cool. I didn't understand how she, uh, how she made this until I watched the video a couple times, and then I finally got it. These are all different kinds of tax paper, so there's a place to put stuff. Let me use this one. Stuff here on this side and this side, and then if you don't glue it down like I did, you would have had another one here in the back. I just thought that was the coolest idea. And then I took elements of the rip paper on the side, put it there, uh, cut an element out of scrapbook paper, and then put the brad in there just because I could. And then I made sure that I covered the brad up with a, um, a another piece of paper so it wouldn't snag anything that was stuck in there. This is one of the flowers that I drew, and I made it into a stamp, and then I took it off and put it on here. There's that. And these little projects like this, I just love this stuff. All right, this one is a different version of this. So each one of these is a pocket, except for, oh, yep, I didn't, know. Oh, see, I learned from my mistake on the last one. So there's one, two, this one's the glue's a little too far over, but the skinny one will fit in there. Three, and then four. And this barely goes in there, but that's... All right, and then this is one of those scrap pads again. They make the cutest little accoutrement to um, whatever it is you're making. And you just slip it inside one of these pockets, and then somebody has a place to do journaling. And then there's a little extra add element. This is a watercolor I did, and I did the washi tape across there again. And again, this has tuck spot. You can do as many tuck spots on these things as you want. But... You know, I didn't need to do so many. This one was fun. This is not glued in the book. All right, so there's this one. And when I looked at it, it looks like the brown goes over the gold. That's not true. The gold goes over the brown. So this was scrapbook paper with brown cardstock. And Peg sent me some butterflies that were, I think they're on acetate, the see-through stuff. And then I just covered the, colored the, uh, the butterfly with an orange Sharpie marker. You open it up, and there's the other side. This is one piece of paper. You fold in half, you take this out, and then you put it over the edge of the card. So it gives you a tuck spot in the front, tuck spot in the back. This again, let's see, this one goes in here like this. You can make it a tuck spot from this way if you want to do it that way. Then you turn it over, you lift up this, and then you have a giant envelope on the back. And you don't glue this in the book, because if you did, then you'll be missing this element of it. So this is a uh, tag done where she curled the edges of the uh, paper clip. And I thought that was very cool. I couldn't get it to work exactly the way she did it. And I did sew again and use some uh, glossy accents on the flowers. This is all leftover stuff. So this goes, you just put it on the edge of the page. And then you clip it on with something nice. You know, it's just an added element. All right, so on this side, this is another one for her flip-flap things. This was a, um, I can't remember. I think this came from Tuesday morning. It's one of those cord, uh, one of those chipboard sets where they're really thick. So I peeled that off and made this flat. Then I took uh, watercolors and kind of brushed it over it. The rest of this is cardstock from a set that's 12 by 12 paper and it has the uh, velcro and again I did not make this whoops I did not make this exactly the way she did but I did it for what I want it for so here are two tuck spots down here at the bottom that has you know little tags in it then this is another scrap pad but it has a belly band with brads on either end and this is just, again, coffee dyed paper. Oh, there's some lined paper in there. There we go. And then sewn. Just, it's like stupid little things like this that are details that make a journal what it is. It makes it wonderful. And then you just flip it up. 
do this. And if you don't glue it on the back, look here. You got oh, let me put this back in. You have your little tuck spot in the back too. All right, this is another one of those folding things. Um, this one is just scrapbook paper, and then another kind of scrapbook paper where I had big pieces left of it, and I knew I was going to use it on something else. So I used it to store these envelopes. She calls these Gale, is it Antonelli? Um, envelopes. I, I don't know anything about any of that. All I know is I had a piece of dyed paper and took it and cut it and then you fold it. But hers came undone, the top flaps. I went ahead and glued mine down and put a little thing over here. And then I just fold it up. That's their journaling envelopes, I guess. And put it here and then it goes in there. And then this one's another version of the same thing. This has lined paper just folds up. It's just a little journaling spot and because this is cardstock and I folded it over it's, and then glued more stuff on top of it, it's a little thick. Right there, there's that. Let's put it up here. And then again another bookmark and the tuck spot. There's two different tuck spots on here. There's one that goes here that's small and then you have the larger one here on this side. Oh, there you go. There it is. I guess I put that paper there so I didn't have to use the card. And then it's just got the basic paper clip on the back. This is, these are two tags that were cut out of six by six paper that I know I'm not going to use in other things. It was all um, sea and water and map related. So I took little buttons. I drew the waves on here, took little buttons, popped off the uh, shank on the back. This is a sticker. And then you just open it up, and there's two little journal spots right there. It's just a little card. This, again, is another um, matchbook, but this is a really long one. And this one I did the way she did. Sewed at the top. And you go at the bottom. I'm not one for using staples on anything, but this one required a staple at the bottom. This sticker came from my friend Cindy Utter. Um, you know, people send you happy happy mail all the time. There's a group of us that swap stuff. Post office is making a fortune from us. So um, I went I went through my stuff and was looking thing for things that I could use in this journal. And then this is just a giant card. This is the belly band in the front, tuck spot on the side, and then pages of copy dyed paper. You can make this into a little mini album. So what she did was, so she could look at it, is she put it in the journal with Velcro. So um, there's six places on here, and you can take it in and out as you want to. If you don't want to glue it in, you don't have to. Just put Velcro on the back, little Velcro dots. Then when you're done, you just kind of line it up a little bit and pop it back in there. And then this goes in there. Isn't that clever? I just was amazed. So that is the end of this one. Oh, wait, I have one more page I need to finish. Shoot. All right, well, I will later. Anyway, so here is the first of five signatures to fill in. So that's what I've been doing for the last, I don't know, month. Oh yeah, let me show you something else that she did that I was just blown away by. Such a simple thing. I love glossy accents. I don't use it often because the stupid thing plugs up. So what I saw on her video was she has this sponge that's Velcroed to the side of the bottle. And come on, come out. And then I <laughs> was put it in there while it was wet. Anyway, um, you just poke your pen in this. And then if you have to use a different bottle, I guess you lose the Velcro. I don't know. But this Velcro is on and off. Maybe. The rate I'm going, nothing. There we go. It's just the Velcro dots with a makeup sponge that I cut in half. And I just pop it on there. And then I'm going to have to get a clean pen. Anyway, so there's that. 
and then while I was waiting for it to glue to for the glue to dry, I just put the rubber band on the side. But she has, if you watch her videos, you will see something like this where she has the pin in this. I thought it was such a clever idea. Okay, well that's it for me for today. Uh, this is the season for ATCs on Art Joy Sharing Facebook group, and it's also the season for ICAD which you can find on Instagram and also Facebook. Let me see. Daisy Yellow or Gypsy999. Instagram is Gypsy999 and on Facebook I think it's called Daisy Yellow. And there are prompts that come out once a week for iCAD. Art Joy Sharing, I don't think there's any prompts. You just do... Um, a two and a half by three and a half card every day or whatever you want it to be. It's the idea is to get you to art every day, which I have no problems doing. <laughs> okay, so that's it for me. I will see you guys next week. Hopefully I will have some ATCs to show you for the first week of ATC week. All right, guys. I hope you had a wonderful Memorial Day, and I will see you next week. Bye.